Hello everyone, welcome to Jack Scraps. Thank you for joining me today for What A Card Wednesday. We are going to be using the Quick Cards Made Easy, issue 153 from June of 2016. And we will be creating a twist turn card and this is an example of what we will be making. I will be using Simple Stories Let's Party paper pad in this creation. So let's get started. For the card base, we are going to cut a eight and a half by five and a half piece of white cardstock. Okay, now that you have your card base cut out, we are going to place the long end at the top of your scoreboard, or if you are using a ruler and a other type of instrument, that will certainly work as well. We are going to score at two and three fourths and four. Okay, now we're going to turn our base to the left, putting the short end at the top, and we're going to score at two and three fourths. Okay, now that we have all of our score lines created, we are going to create two additional score lines. With your paper, facing with the short end at the top and the longer end at the bottom, we are going to create two score lines at a diagonal from the center where, so this was the two and three four score line, this was the four score line, we're gonna go in between that space and create a diagonal line using the center out to the top of the two and three four score line. I hope that makes sense. We're doing that on both sides. All you really need to remember is to keep the shorter end at the top where the score lines are and the longer block at the bottom. Okay, so mine is in the right direction. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler and line it up. From the center of the four inch, you know, four over score line here, from the center out to meet the two and three fourths score line. Do that on both sides. Okay, and once you're done, it will look like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is burnish all the score lines, including the two diagonal ones that we created. You know, you can use your bone folder, you can use the back of scissors or whatever you have handy. Just make sure you go in both directions because that will help the ease of the card to turn. So we'll fold down on this one. And then we're gonna flip it around doing the opposite side. Do that on all score lines, okay? I'll finish this up and I'll be right back. Just wanted to show you here on the diagonal lines. It's a little trickier just take your time. I'm going down first. And then I'm going to do the opposite side. Okay, so they're all now burnished. Okay, now that everything is scored, we are going to fold the card with the long side on your right and the short side panel on your left, you're going to fold the short panel backward, then fold over the card, and then you're going to kind of push right here, and it bends and makes a diamond over the base of the card. 
Okay, so I will do that again. Here's your card base. Fold the short side backward. Fold the card in half. And then push here to bring up the diamond. Now what that does is it makes the mechanism, those little triangles that we created, they bend so that you can bring it over and it lies flat like that. It did take me, you know, at least two times until it was really easy because the mechanism itself is, you know, it's not trained to go in that direction, so it needs <laughs> that little push to get it going. And if you can't get it by pushing, then what I did was go down here and actually just kind of help it along, you know. So it would be pushing the diamond there and pushing the flap over, and then it folds over, okay? So one more helpful hint on this, just remember that um, the peak will face to the back side of the card. So this is the, the valley, and here will be the peaks in the back. So that should help make sure you have your card in the right direction. Okay, look how small this is. <laughs> it's cute. Okay, now that we have our base done, we're going to cut the pieces that we need to decorate it. So what I have done is cut a two and five eighths by four and three eighths black piece of cardstock, and I'm going to lay that down here. And then I've cut a two and a half by four and a fourth piece of decorative paper, and I'm going to layer that on top of it. Now this is from the Simple Stories um, paper pad, and I added glitter as well as um, Wink of Stella so that it would have some glitter on there. And because I own the collection, I'm also using some chipboard pieces, and I've decided to use this little boy. I think he's so cute right there. So that's how that will look. On this diamond piece, I'm going to layer a two and five eighths by two and five eighths piece of cardstock, and then I'm going to add a two and a half by two and a half piece of decorative paper. And then I'm also going to add another piece of chipboard of the cake and put the celebrate across it. So then it will look like that. I may also include, I found some stars and some little swirlies, or I may use some enamel dots that I actually have as well. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all this together now that I've told you all the sizes. You can go ahead and glue and cut out your pieces as well. Okay, so I've adhered the base and the first decorative layer to both of these sections. And um, on the inside, I realized that I probably, before layering the chipboard pieces, should put what I want in on the inside just for ease. And so I've added a two and five eighths by four and three eighths piece of decorative paper here. And I found some with lines so that they could actually leave a message or sentiment here and sign the card. I added a die cut here for some decoration, but this is a flat um, die cut rather than ones that are chipboard or with dimension. So that when you're folding it, it actually folds rather flat. So on this side, you know, we're going to adhere the chipboard piece. What I've decided to do with this as well is because it will be hanging over just slightly, I wanted to put some decorative paper on the back side of it. So I cut out a piece and adhered it to the back. This was very tricky and not perfection, <laughs> I must say. So um, it'll still look fine. It still kind of gives it some like of a shadow and dimension as well on the front as on the back. Now that we'll have, it won't just be white back here and sticky because these were sticky chipboard pieces. 
So before we adhere that one, I thought we would go ahead and adhere the cake. This is a sticky back cake. I think I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue to it just to be safe that there's enough on there. I'm using art glitter glue, of course. And I'm wanting to center it where the flame will be kind of in the middle here. So it will hang out just a little bit. So now that I've got it marked, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out flat so I can push it down on there. Perfect. And then I will go ahead and adhere the banner sentiment that I have. And it says celebrate. And I'm going to put it in between these two layers here. Again, I think I'll just add a little dab of glue. And put it right there in the center of those layers. And so it will look like that. There we go. I'm liking that very much. And then let's go ahead and add our little guy on here. Okay, I put some glue on the back and what I'm going to do is have it hang out a little bit over the decorative and base layer there. It helps to add more dimension. Okay, so that is the front of the card. Now what I think I'm going to do also is add a decorative piece here and here as well to finish off the card. And I'll do that and come back and show you. It'll be the same measurements um, that we used for the others. Okay, so here we are. This is the card that we have made today. I did add another star down here and I added Wink Estella to the top of that as well as to the candle flame. So hopefully you can see that, I'm not sure. Um, but I think it ties it all in with a little bit of shimmer there. Don't want to make it too sparkly since it is for a little boy or I imagine you could give this to a little girl as well if you wanted. On the back side, I added the deco paper here as well as here. I think it all ties in very nicely and then it opens like that. And it actually sits pretty well on the desk. Okay, before we go, one of the things I thought we might start doing is creating envelopes to go along with the cards. And today I am going to be making a four by five and a half card using my envelope punch board. And um, that says that you have a paper size of seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So that's what I've already cut out here. And then our score is going to be at three and three eighths. So I'll go ahead and put in the paper, align it to three and three eighths. We will punch and then score. So then you turn it and you align the score line that you just created with this little, um, arm there, punch, and score. And then you do that all the way around.
Okay. Now what we'll do is make all the folds. Now I must say you have to be careful when you have directional paper or if you have um, words, you know, they would be upside down if you used um, decorative paper with words. So if you don't mind that, then you can certainly use it. Um, but if you do, just keep that in mind. Now, what I did before I started here, I wanted to make sure that the lines were going this direction or this direction in the right way. So I kind of figured out what I needed to start on. So because I wanted the pattern to be going across, I aligned the envelope first to the decorative paper before doing any of this. And then I could see that I need to start in this direction with the diagonal. I hope that makes sense. I was just trying to uh, let you know to be a little bit careful when you have paper that is directional or that you have printed paper. So I don't really care for the pointiness here, so I'm going to cut that off and I'll be right back. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add art glitter glue and I'm going to add it to the insides of the panels, not to the base there because this way you don't put glue where you don't really want it. Okay. So that's what it looks like when it's done. Um, I thought I might put some more decorations on top, but I first want to show you that this card will fit right into the envelope. Like that. It gives it just a little bit of dimension. You might need some additional stamps if you happen to mail it, but it, you know, fits in a regular size type envelope. So that's really exciting. Okay, so I've cut out a label using my Cricut and then I pulled out one of the die cuts that are paper thin and I'm going to adhere that on here in between the two lines for symmetry and then we'll put that on there. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's see. Let's see right here. Just trying to center it between the two sides. Okay, I've decided to add on a little package here. I thought that really set it off and looks super cute there. And then I added a few stars on the back side. So that really does it. I was lucky enough to have a collection um, today. And if you don't have a collection, you can use any die cuts that you like to do this. You could layer paper and use flowers or whatever to decorate it. So I hope you won't be discouraged if you don't have these particular items in your stash. But this was super fun to make, and at least you know how to make the base card and can go from there. So thanks everyone for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.